you doing? I'm Wayne. Uh, we're at Acme Choppers today with Chris from Cycle Source Magazine. We're going to show you guys around the shop, you know, give you a little bit of an idea of what we do here and, and why we do it. Um, my business partner is my brother Jason. You know, we've been in this uh, together since about 2005. This is a new shop for us. You know, we just moved here about a year and a half ago. Um, it's quite a bit more space than we had at our old place. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with our old shop, but it was uh, it was pretty tight and it was a pretty you know uh, humble beginning. You know, we're glad to be in the space we're in now and, and being able to do you know being able to do what we're doing. So if you guys can bear with us, we'll uh, we'll give you a tour and show you what we're up to now and and where we're going. Right on. This is our retail outlet and, uh, and, and showroom. We try to keep some product on hand, you know, for guys that come in off the street and everything. Although the majority of our sales are internet based, we, we try to keep a good representation of the shirts and bikes and, and that kind of stuff on hand at any given time. Just like the stuff in the showroom, there's a few of our key products, some of our grips and handlebars that are real popular, as well as the triple trees and, and frame builder parts that we sell a lot of. So we always just try to you know, make sure that when guys come in, they they've got something to look at and and pique their interest. Uh, this is our this is our clean room. This is where I store a lot of my old BMX stuff. I've been collecting uh, eight, 70s and 80s BMX parts for years, and um, the majority of the items that I hunt for are like new old stock or really mint condition, you know, original parts. And uh, the stuff's getting harder to find, so I try to. You know, I try to collect up as much as I can. My, my brother Jay and I, we, we pretty much grew up, you know, on uh, on the BMX bikes, you know, back in the 80s when all this stuff was popular. You know, obviously Hutch was a was a huge name. And, you know, we used to ride Hutch back in the day. And uh, things just kind of progressed from, from all this BMX stuff into go-karts and mini bikes and, you know, mopeds, clapped out mopeds that we'd strip everything off and take them up in the woods and just, you know, run them until they broke. You know, and then we just light the things on fire and get something else to play with. You know what I mean? So that's that's really where all this stuff started from, from the BMX and and all the motorsports toys and motocross and and you name it. You know, when we were kids, if it had wheels and a motor, you know, we we were all about it. And uh, there's really never been a time when when we weren't doing something like this. We were always chopping something up, trying to get something to run, trying to make something lighter, faster you know, cooler or different than everything else you saw out there. And it's really just been a natural progression. You know, I, I can't imagine that it ever would have gone any differently for Let's us. see, we got a an original uh, GHP frame that was new old stock, right out of the box, never, you know, never been assembled. That's a 1983 GHP. Um, all these right here are, are obviously seats um, and some tires. With the, with the vintage BMX stuff, the seats and the tires a lot of times and the wear items, you know, like like grips, those are the hardest things to, to get a hold of because they literally have to be unused or in perfect condition. Uh, all the other parts, the hard items, they can be restored, you know, stuff can be re-chromed, re-polished, fixed up, but when you're talking about seats and, and you know, rubber tires from 1984, you're either going to find them in perfect shape or you're not going to find them. I mean, you don't have a lot of options. Um, so we got a bunch of tires. We got a bunch of the, the old school Diacomp seat clamps. I got the clamshell style and the hinge style. Those are uh, those are a definite must for any of your old school BMX builds. A couple of PK Ripper frames in here that are new old stock. You know, those are pulled right out of the original boxes. This one still has the original warranty card on it. Never, never been assembled, you know, never had any wheels mounted or neck cups in it or anything like that. You know, same with the pads. Uh, this set here is actually an original set from the early 80s. This set's from about 81. This set here is a, is a repro. This is a copy, but this is, uh, this is the real deal, you know, from back in the day. Got some cranks here, too. Uh, these are red lines. Most of these are red lines. You get a set of profile box cranks, which uh, these these profile box cranks are really what all the modern BMX cranks are modeled after. They were first uh, splined, boxed crank that they came out with back in the early 80s, and that that design is is used by just about every major manufacturer of BMX cranks now. You know, right through today, most modern cranks are are built the same way. It, it became a necessity to be able to do. Uh, the things that we wanted to do and have and really have control over the price and, and the end product When we started out, you know, just like anybody else. I mean, I, I had a, a decent 
mechanical aptitude and, and a really good mechanical background. The same with my brother Jay. You know, we were always wrenching on stuff and, you know, doing backyard mechanics and stuff like that. But when we started getting to the bikes, you know, and we needed to have parts machined, you know, we, we'd, we'd go to a machine shop with some chicken scratch, you know, drawing on the back of a napkin and ask these guys, you know, to quote out a job. And you can only imagine, you know, how far you get trying to operate like that. So we had a real hard time uh, outsourcing, you know, some of the things that we, we needed to have done. So over the years, we, we really ended up just taking control of all those things in house and teaching ourselves how to do that. You know, I, I taught myself how to weld. My brother Jay taught himself how to weld. I taught myself how to, you know, run all the fabricating equipment, the lathes, the milling machine, the tubing benders, all that stuff because it's just a, there's no way to really get someone else on board with your vision and it's super expensive to uh, to farm that work out somewhere else. So we, we ended up in a spot where over time, you know, we forced ourselves to, to, to really learn our craft from every angle all the tools and all the equipment in this shop most of the guys here can run just about everybody in this place can run a mill run a lathe can can you know tig weld their ass off if they need to you know and uh and that that's that's really how it happened you know, because because it had to we're, we're both really really picky and when it comes to engineering fit and finish you know a lot of that stuff does come from the from the bmx era you know a lot of the really cool details and um a lot of the finish work on, on a lot of these bikes, yeah, it's, it's very, very impressive. You know, it's always, it was always very impressive to me, even as a kid. And I try to emulate a lot of that and bring over some of that design style uh, in, in the things that we do now, especially our frame sets, our loop tail frame sets, along with the boxed gusset and everything. I mean, that's it's almost a copy of the original SC Race and PK Ripper frame, you know, except it's, it's for a motorcycle. It's where we store a lot of the parts that... We have uh, oil tanks and oil tank mounts here. These are different risers, six inch brass and aluminum, and the one and a half inch risers. Triple trees ready to be chrome plated and powder coated. Obviously grips, gas caps, heat shields. Uh, these are various assortments of our Springer front ends. We always try to stay ahead on these because we sell quite a few of them, so we'll stub them out, we'll basically build them but we leave the ends unfinished because we're not 100% sure what length someone's going to order. You know, we pretty much finish them up and trim them to length as as they get ordered and then ship them out for powder coat and chrome and whatever. And we do also sell a fair fair amount of uh, raw finished ones, so some days we can we can turn them around and get them shipped, you know, the same day even if someone calls in the order early enough. These are our, these are our loop tail axle blocks which uh it's not real obvious when they're on the frame that they're a billet piece. It just looks like a piece of tubing once it's metal finished in. But these uh, these things are actually machined one piece out of a full billet. And they've got these recesses for the paint savers to go into so your axle doesn't dig all your shit up. This is our like metal finishing and polishing room. This is pretty much where like we try to keep all the nastiest parts of the process sort of enclosed in here so we got you know um deburring station here you know with some with some finishing wheels and then then our two the two main buffers that we run this thing's a total dinosaur it's got like a three horsepower electric motor in it this thing can literally like rip your arms off if you're not careful we use this one primarily for all the heavy buffing this one for finish buffing and like i said this one's just a gray wheel for deburring and everything this is the main shop area where we do the majority of the fabrication and uh, lay out any of the projects that we're working on. At any given time, we've usually got three or four customer projects and a few shop projects going. Um, right now, with a lot of the triumphs that we're doing, we pretty much you know crank those out and, and just put them on eBay for the most part. We sell probably six or eight triumphs a year right now, you know, through uh, through online sales. So we've always got. Well, we've got at least a few Triumph projects going. This is our, our frame building fixture. Um, this whole plate is basically keyed on inch and a half centers, and we've got a whole we've got a whole system of different motor plates and uh, jig attachments so that we can build all the different frames. You know, it's got basically infinite adjustment. Right now, this is set up for building some Triumph hardtails, where we basically use 
part of a, a factory front, you know, a factory front loop triumph frame in order to hold the fixing points to build the tails. This is a, a section of tails that we just finished. We're actually running off uh, 10 hard tails for another shop that that we do fabrication work. Uh, this shelf is machining fixtures. So all the all the in-house machining that we do, all the parts that we make, these are the actual machining fixtures that we use to, to hold all the, all the parts in place while they're being machined. And this shelf down here, these are all the attachments that we built over the years for our frame jig. So we've got uh, motor mount attachments for XS 650s, for early triumphs, for unit triumphs, the new Hinkley triumphs. We obviously do Harley stuff, four speed, five speed, six speed, and uh, these universal fixtures that we made, you know, allow us to, to place them on that plate anywhere we want and, and build anything that uh, anything we can imagine. This is uh, this is pretty much the main fab table where I do most of my welding and, and any of the small fab jobs. Uh, this plate here is for our Springer front ends. So this set of fixtures is actually, you know, obviously a front end being finished in here now. You can kind of get an idea of how, how everything locates. So these are all adjustable. We can do the, the different width front ends in here, the narrows and the wides. So you get the stanchions to hold the front end square and true. We hold the headstock here. You know, the, the headstock just slides right up through and locates. And obviously, this holds the the axle stubs. This is all of our stock. This is where we keep all the uh, all the frame tubing and all the raw materials to build our risers, our handlebars, you know, any of the the solid frame components, motor mounts, what have you. Over here, we basically have all the mild steel uh, tubing, then the brass, and any of the aluminum that we use. This whole rack here is stainless. It's nothing but stainless steel on that rack. We use quite a bit of stainless, especially in the handlebars and uh, any of the foot controls and that sort of thing that we make. And this big rack over here is primarily loaded with frame tubing. It's got the frame tubing and handlebar tubing for basically every, every type of project that we do. And we always, we always have it really well stocked. We burn through that tubing, you know, 100 feet a week anyway. I'm uh, Jason Alquist here at this Acme Choppers. Uh, Wayne and I run it. Uh, I pretty much handle all the day-to-day -day stuff around, phone orders and dealing with customers and keeping everything on track like that. Uh, Wayne does most of all the big fabrication jobs and design of everything. And we've been uh, doing it right along for a while and everything's been going pretty good as far as um, you know, staying busy and keeping, uh, keeping up with what's going on and everything. I mean, since yeah. we were since we were old enough to like really hold wrenches or had any interest in, in doing anything. I mean, since we were little kids, you know, uh, I'm four years older than Jay. So I mean, I can remember times, you know, when he was eight or nine, you know, and I was, you know, whatever, 11 or 12 years old, we would, uh, we'd work on stuff together, you know, all the time. So we're at a point, like when, when me and Jay are working on stuff, we don't even really have to talk about what's going on. You know, we can, we, we just work. And uh, Jay's really, really patient and has a lot of skills when it comes to wiring and, and final assembly stuff like the real detail oriented stuff that I, I kind of get frustrated with. So everything works out real good because I can, I can hammer on a frame, set handlebars, do you know heavy grinding, welding, whatever, fab the stuff up, you know, engineer, whatever we need on a, on a chassis, you know, engine center lines, chassis center line for the wheels, the whole nine yards. And when it gets to the point where uh, you know where I'm stuck. You know, sometimes he can come over and look at something and just be like, "Hey, you're an idiot." You know, what about the oil tank? You know, what's going to happen when I go to put a chain on this thing? And you know, we have this clearance problem or that. You know, we're going to get stuck making uh, these crazy, ridiculous oil tanks with chain notches in them because you have the seat height too low. You know, so he's always the one that kind of, you know, when I go off and I'm just building something because I want it to look as cool and short and tucked in as possible. He's always the one that comes over and says, okay, yeah, that, that looks real nice, but what happens when we need to put the friggin' thing together? You know what I mean? And, um, you know, his, his level of attention to detail with, with all that stuff is, is, is a real big deal, and I think it's one of the big reasons why the bikes we build come out the way they do, you know? Because just when I start getting a little too far ahead of myself with the artistic aspect of it, I'm reminded pretty quickly by Jay and some of the other guys here that you know, at some point all the other parts need to go on this bike and all the other stuff needs to work and, and fit and, and not be a total nightmare.